anybody that would like to um, do the documents that we're putting up on internallydisplacedpeople.org forward slash court seals, they will find two sets of documents. One set is specifically to be served on the court. The second set, which is really just one, one document, is a stipulation of material facts for the sheriff. So first I want to explain how the, the court documents would be prepared. So the first document is called a lawful direction for abatement at law due to facially void summons. And in that document you will find red, red wording and the red wording would be replaced with your information. So you're going to find everywhere where it's red and you're going to replace it with your information. And I will see the free download of this document it, right it, on the... It is a free download. Actually, it may be a copy and paste. So okay. you may have to copy this document and paste it into your own Word document. So that will be at internallydisplacedpeople.org slash court seals. Court seals, correct. Okay. Um, one of the thing I, I kind of want people to be careful of is you need to look on the summons and see the name of the court that each court has a different way that they do it, or rather each attorney may do it in a different manner. So you need to make sure there is a, a title up here and you will actually put that in, in the manner that you see on the summons. All the rest of the information will be, it's pretty self-explanatory. So for instance, case number, and then you're gonna put in your case number. The county name will be the county where the court is, appears. So, for instance, if you're in Contra Costa, you're going to change everywhere where it says county name in red to Contra Costa. And the case number is usually on the summons? It, the case number will be found also on the summons. Exactly. Um, that, that document, other than that, is there's only a few places where you will be putting in that information. Um, you will need to know the judges, the presiding judge's name. Each county has a presiding judge. You will have to Google that, find out the list of judges in your county, and then it would be the presiding judge's name would go into that document. Not the judge for the case, but the presiding judge, because this is for, for him. He's the one who is supposed to um, maintain proper process. Presiding judge of the superior court system. Yes, the okay. superior for that county. Right. Each county has their own one. Okay. So that would be the first document. The second document is simply an affidavit that would go with it. Again, it's the same information. You're going to look for the red and make sure it applies to you. The only difference, um, there is an occasion here where it would say his, and obviously if you're a woman, you are going to change his to her but it does appear in red. And the same in terms of the word man, you will put in the word woman. But apart from that, it would be the same information. County name, court case number, and then your name. Everything else would stay the same. And that affidavit is downloaded next to the other one. Absolutely. Okay. The only other difference is, as most people will know, an, an affidavit must be um, notarized. So right. you will need to get that notarized. The third document in this series is one that's called Facts Controlling the Summons Process from Inferior Courts of Limited Jurisdiction, relied on in annexed affidavit in support of lawful direction for abatement at law due to facially void summons. Sounds kind of long. We want to make sure that they realize that we're not saying that these laws, are that, that we gain authority from what we're doing. This is merely something that applies to those courts. By their laws and their rules. Their laws, their rules, their inferior courts. Their courts are statutory courts. They are creatures of statute and they must abide by the statutes. These are the statutes that are applicable. There is nothing to change in that document. It is very simple. Print it out and it will just go at the back of the other two. So these all go in the same envelope, same mailing? Together. Same envelope, same mailing. The important thing is, is this needs to be served on the court by a third party, uh, a disinterested party, party, so a witness. So there will be a certificate of mailing attached. So, so the, the sheriff usually can do that for a fee, correct? Yes. 
But for you those could of you have a, a third party <laughs> mailing agent, a private mailing agent, a private mailing agent, as long as they know how to uh, write out a, an a certificate, a certificate. Ab absolutely. And we will include a certificate, a sample certificate. Apart from the sheriff, is there a particular place you can find uh, people who do that or process servers? I think they charge around twenty five dollars or maybe fifty dollars. I can't remember now. It's been a while. But anyway, so a, a process server, you can look those up. In your local area. Yeah, and, and literally you just want it served. Somebody can, you can have a third party walk in there as long as they don't do more than 10 of these a year. They're allowed to do that without the, the need of having any sort of license or bond or anything else. So they can walk into the, the, um, the court that you, that you're, that, where the case, the action is taking place and they can serve it at the, with the clerk. So. And write their certificate and give that to you. There you go. And then, well, get it to the person who's initiating this doesn't have to come to me. I'm talking about the certificate of mailing? Yeah, I don't need those. They just need that the person who's initiating this mailing, they need that. They would need to show that that was served just in case anything moves without their knowledge. They right. will Let, have proof. Let's be, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. the, uh, who, whoever is mailing these documents yes. needs to recover the copy of the certificate of mailing and Absolutely. keep that with their files. Keep that for your records. keep the original. And if you have to give it, I'll give out photocopies. Unless you're filing it in court, then you put the original in court. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And, and is there just the court clerk we're serving these on, or are there other parties we have to serve That's the on? only one that has to be has to be served whoever, on. Whoever yes. sent you the summons, writ, or, or uh, warrant. Yes, it would be that court, the, the, the court. clerk of court for that court. Very absolutely. Good. Yes. All right. Um, you know, for people that want to be really thorough, there's no reason why you can't mail a copy to the presiding judge, um, putting him on notice that they don't have the requisite seal. It's that simple. Right. Right. Um, so the second document that will be, um, or the second series of documents that will be available on the website is the notice to the sheriff. This is called a stipulation to material facts by agreement of the parties. Again, there will be red writing in there, the red writing needs to be um, that information needs to be changed by the person who's sending this out go ahead now, is this something that is you always need or just if you're using the sheriff to perform service oh no this is it, this is some this is you want to give notice to the sheriff so the sheriff has a duty to serve facially valid processes and if your court does not have the requisite seal then the sheriff is not serving facially valid processes. So to be clear, this is the sheriff that served the notice on you. Absolutely. Who's going to get this. Yes, and, absolutely. And you want the sheriff to know that he has a duty in this as well. Yeah, you're giving him notice of his duty and um, making him uh, aware of the fact that he's actually liable on his bonds. It's him or her. Him or her, yeah. absolutely. So, and, and that's it. So you just fill out the red. Um, oh, and this should be sent by registered mail. It should be sent non-domestic, registered mail, not certified mail. Is that both of those? No, the other one, no, remember, no is going to be served. So that's a third party server. This one should be sent registered. You don't have to serve this. You send it, but you can just mail it. But mail. it needs to be sent by registered mail. If Absolutely. It, and if someone asks them the technicality of why it's registered, you, you were talking about undomestic. Yeah, domestic? it's not domestic mail. All certified mail is domestic mail. You want this coming as non-domestic. And so. can you briefly explain what, what that means legally to be non-domestic, why that matters? Well, the, the registered mail is completely traceable. Somebody has to hold it all the way. So it's completely verifiable all the way through from when you hand it in at the post office till they they actually you know um, serve it on whoever they serve it on so and it and it's also as a result of it being non-domestic um, you know so it, it's actually coming from you in a common law venue I mean the, one of the problems is is that we no longer have our common law venue mm -hmm. so that's coming from your common law venue into their statutory venue so there's a change in the jurisdiction you don't want it coming from a statutory venue into a statutory venue right so you're maintaining kind of your uh, our arms arms length arm's into length. the into the venue yeah, absolutely you're, you're not volunteering into the I'm not volunteering you're into the venue from outside uh, absolutely I yes see. and uh, another thing is on here um, and also, as on the other documents, you may want to use a notary as, as your, um, your third party witness also to receive any, any responses. 
and this is because many of us don't have general delivery anymore so we are technically under a zip code in their in their forum state and so in a sense it's it's almost traversing into their sta into their venue so it's good to do it from outside the venue and some notaries can perform mailing agents some services. notaries can perform that um, if not, you can use any care of address. So, you know, it's just better to have care of, and that gives you that arm's length as um, opposed interaction. To your own as opposed to your address. Absolutely. Yeah, you okay. do not want to do this as being from you at an address with a zip code. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see. Yes. I think we got it. Anything I else? I think that's it. Um, oh, there no. are a couple of other yeah. little things I, I, I want to say. Um, so for those of you that, you know, you can take this, you'll have all the information here for all those people that prefer to do things from within their venue. Again, um, you, you, you know, we don't expect the same impact. We've been doing this from a motion to quash perspective. You will have all the information in here for those of you that feel better doing a statutory response and you know you can easily turn this into a motion to quash or even a writ of a writ of uh, mandamus you have all the information here for those of you that prefer to do it from that venue but this is specifically for those of us um, who have enough research to understand that we don't want to be in their venue we're not in their venue and this is from outside their venue and so an abatement is the correct method and that's what that is. The, and that's the what this is. The first document sh showed us. Absolutely. Okay. And so, do we have to know anything more, or have an idea of, of further where we would go to enforce this legally, so that we have, uh, you know, the the outcome we want? <laughs> Enforcement is always an interesting subject. Um, we, you know, on the whole right now, you know, no one has enforcement. I mean, there is no way you can't force them unless, um, you know, we, you write to the UN and ask them to send a military operation. There's, and what would they do? They'd send the U.S. <laughs> so, so it's the prospect of a lawsuit or something you would bring. Um, and, and again, which, count, which court would you go into seeing as none of them have a proper seal? So with that in mind... Mm -hmm they can see, oh, this person's telling me that I'm not compliant with the law. Yes. But, but so, so Which what? is why we don't use the motion to quash. That's why we preferred the, the abatement. The abatement comes from a man or woman in their common law, um, in, in the common law venue, to them in the statutory venue. And the common law venue is actually higher. Yeah. So that's the idea of this. The thing is, is that we need enough numbers, enough people to, you know, wake up to the fact that these are not the courts that we think they are. Um, and we will also be starting a letter campaign to the legislature asking them why are the, these statutory courts not available to us? Where is the statutory court that you speak of in the statutes? Why are they not complying? So it's so. important that everyone that would be interested in doing this and might be subject to some writ warrant, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, look for other people who are in the same situation to yes. also do the same process yes. and start to build up numbers and then possibly contact some legislators or um, uh, you know is there any other way that you can present a strong front to these people to say well yes you do have to pay attention to this uh, service the, the these documents how what else yeah, we, we, we will definitely post updates as we move along. And um, the other thing is, is we would um, suggest that anybody who needs any more information, contact us at info at internallydisplacedpeople.org. We do have meetings every Tuesday. If you're interested in attending, then I will definitely send you information on that. And that's where any questions can be answered. Yes. Other people who may be in your area might be found. Yes. Uh, all, all the things that, uh, the benefits of community and yeah. of, uh, social networking. A absolutely. Good. A and definitely we want to hear from other states that may be interested in doing the research as well. Exactly. So your meetings, which are two nights Tuesdays. A week? Just Tuesdays. Oh, Tuesdays. Tuesdays Six on Zoom. 6 p.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Uh, and um, anyone can join. They, but, they, but they would send you... An email that we get your email address off of uh, info in, internally at displaced people dot org. Yes. And then you find the info at internally displaced people dot org. <laughs> and that's the email and places. Please send me the login for the Tuesday meeting. Yes, absolutely. Very good. Very good. Thank sure. you so much. Thank you.